Okay, <laughs> I will get started. Um, yes. <coughs> okay, so <laughs> chapter uh, 10 is kind of the uh, an important chapter because it will be the starting point for you for your assignments number two and three, basically. Uh, you'll be referring to some of the tools and methods they talk about in this chapter. So it's a good idea to um, to get this, uh, to at least understand chapter 10 at first and then further. Basically, what we're talking about is um, <coughs> if you're going to be designing like a, so a website and you want to either start from scratch or start from something that's already been up and, and running, uh, you usually go through a process. And the process means that you First, have to look at uh, your. Res you have to do some research. You have to find out what is the background for the website, what are your goals, and what kind of business context are you talking about. And there's <coughs> several tools that we talk about in this chapter that uh, expand on what is it that you're supposed to do in terms of preparing for uh, redesigning a website or creating a website from scratch. Uh, the next step is that you would have a strategy, and the strategy is that um, you would kind of design at a higher level how your website is going to look, and uh, what is it they, what are the business processes that guide uh, the project, and uh, so this you will be using different tools like um, uh, that they will talk about in chapter eleven like blueprints and, and different types of um, uh, wireframes for designing your website. Uh, but uh, and when you go to the stage of design, which will be, so this will be chapter 10 is research, chapter 11 is strategy, and then 12 is design. We'll talk about how you shape the, the basic strategy into what's going to be the look and feel of your website. And this is where we make use of the wireframes and metadata schemes for creating uh, the website design. And then implementation is putting the design into use and test. And then um, and putting it, it maybe into uh, use into diff at different stages. So you might be testing one area of the website and then uh, launching it and then testing the next area and launching that and so forth. And as you get feedback on user tests, you might redesign uh, certain aspects of the website. And then administration is a continuous uh, evaluation of how it's being used and how it's performing and, diff and identifying different ways that you can improve the website. So <coughs> what uh, this book mostly talks about is the first three stages of the process, which is research, uh, strategy, and design. And then we don't go into very much the implementation and the administration part of this, uh, but rather focus on the first three. And that's also <coughs> basically what you're going to be doing in your projects, in your assignments uh, two and three as well. <coughs> so uh, the framework is discussed on page 233 of the book, and it breaks down uh, the framework for research into context, content, and users. And so you should be looking into uh, what is what are the business goals um, that you're trying to achieve, uh, what are the other factors that come into play, like how much money do you have to spend on the website, are there any local politics that are important, is there a certain... Um, technology that has to be used, what are the resources you have for, um, for making the website and maintaining it. And then the content has to do with the documents and the t document types and the type of metadata that you'll have associated with the, with the main content. And then um, <coughs> the how, what is the size of the website, how much use is it going to get, uh, and then the uh, the amount of content will it be very large, and how are you going to structure it? 
and then users are the audience that needs to use the content. Uh, do you understand their needs? Do you understand their searching behaviors? Uh, do you understand uh, what kinds of vocabulary they will use and how you make associations between the vocabulary that, that they use and the content that you want them to find? So these are the three aspects that you have to research before you can go into the designing, uh, or the planning and the designing of the website. Uh, this is uh, broken down into more detail what they talk about. Um, uh, context, you need to first build awareness and support of the project and that's uh, discussed on page 234. So you have to have meetings with key groups of people that will be involved in the analysis. And um, yeah. so um, uh, this is um, presentations and meetings. So the idea is also that everybody understands uh, what's going on in the redesign or the creation of the website and all of the par par parties that are involved in this process. Um, uh, they are involved at the, at the beginning of this process in these presentations and meetings and they, go, they all get on board and they all understand the main business goals. And then uh, the content uh, you need to do a heuristic evaluation of the current site to see what already exists and what can be used. And that means that you're not starting from scratch, you're starting from something that might have existed already. You need to look at how it's being used. Uh, to analyze the content of the present website, you gather representative <coughs> samples from the site. And this could be formats and document types and sources and subjects. So you you get information about how things are organized at present, the existing architecture. And a more rigorous and extensive end of the spectrum, the heuristic evaluation can include uh, multi-expert reviews and testing of the website. So you can look at how other people experience the website and they can make recommendations of how it can be changed. The site should provide multiple ways to access the same information. Indexes and sitemaps should be employed to supplement the taxonomy, so these are extra tools to ena enable people to understand the hierarchy of the, of the site. Navigation system should provide users with a sense of context. The site should uh, consistently use language appropriate for the audience, so the audience understands the controlled vocabulary. Um, they understand the, you know, how if they search on one term, they might, what they expect to get in, in response to that term. So you might have a way of also uh, in, um, informing the audience as to what the correct terms are, <coughs> educating the audience. And then searching and browsing should be integrated to reinforce each other. So you should be able to use searching, get hits of results, and be able to browse the information that's not uh, too dense but informative. And then from the browsing, you should be able to to refine your search. So this is, um, these this points here are discussed on page 240. Uh, so in here we also have the heuristic evaluation is part of the background search. Um, so the background search also includes understanding what are the materials that you need to uh, have in the, in, the, in the context, what is the business vision uh, the heuristic evaluation can be the expert critique of the site, which we talked about here. And then um, you also have, um, uh, let's see, uh, then you want to look at, um, next you want to analyze the samples for looking at patterns and relationships. Uh, two other tools for the content search phase are the content mapping uh, make a visual map of the current site and benchmarking, which is both uh, internally before and after and against the competitor's website. So what you do here is you, uh, you can make an outline of what is currently found on the current site and then compare this to what's found on the competitor's site. And here we have... Um, uh, this is also part of the context, understanding the research and the background of the context. You have, um, okay, the presentation and meetings are talked about on page 236. 
you have the stakeholder interviews, which are um, um, the users assessed uh, how the how the site looks at present and how the site will look in the future. So this is not the experts, but it's the people that are involved in the creation of the website. They will evaluate the website at present and in the future. And then you have the technology assessment, which looks at maybe you need to use some additional tools. Um, and you have to see what's maybe missing from the current website and what you would want to have in the future website. Uh, under content, you have the heuristic evaluation is the expert, the metadata and content analysis. Um, <coughs> the metadata analysis might be an audit of this, the current terms that are used on the website, and that's talked about on page 241. Uh, the content analysis might also be a listing, a, like a, a very methodical listing of uh, the how what kinds of hierarchies exist on the website in a list of terms. And this is uh, an example of this is on page 243. And then the content mapping is uh, um, where you map the content between uh, concepts and the words. And this is an example on page 244. And this content mapping between concepts and the words that might be in the list uh, would lead to benchmarking, which is comparing your content uh, and your associations compared to how another site might do, your competitor site might do it. And that's on page 245. So this is, a lot of this is at least mentioned in the research background in, in chapter 10. And then this is stuff on users is not uh, gone into as much detail. There's, um, uh, you can use a search log or a clickstream analysis to see like a statistics on how what pages people have visited and how long they stayed on the different pages. Uh, you can use use cases and personas. Use cases would be like you have a certain type of customer and they have certain kinds of characteristics and and this is what this type of customer would search for. <coughs> and then you have a context contextual inquiry. Um, so you might have a more specific inquiry within a certain area. And then you have uh, user interviews and user testing. So these are just ways of getting feedbacks from the users. Uh, so this, a lot of the users are talked about on information is talked about on page 247. So finding out what the users want through testing. And they mention the same things that are talked about here. Uh, you can use uh, search log analysis, customer support data, usage statistics, surveys, contextual inquiry, focus groups, or is also a type of interview. Uh, interviews, card sorting, and user testing. Um, and these are, <coughs> this is this information here. So I tried to, this is materials and vision. Um, the presentation meetings, everyone should understand the strategy team, uh, the content team, and the IT team. So there's going to be different groups that are doing uh, different things and they need to meet with each other. Uh, the stakeholder interviews are the user assessments of the now and the future, gap analysis, expert critiques, audits, content mapping, benchmarking. Okay. So what I wanted to do is um, on the in the chapter on page 255 they talk about different types of card sorting. And card sorting is a way of doing kind of sort of like a um, content analysis to see if your uh, how your site performs now, and, and uh, if it's if you've been labeling everything correctly or not. So we have um, 
there's two types of co card sorting that are given in the example. There's open card sorting and then there's closed card sorting. If you have open card sorting, you have maybe a new site and you want to brainstorm where you put things. So um, <coughs> you can give out like a bunch of cards to people <coughs> with uh, terms and see how they would group terms under different categories. But in um, closed card sorting, you would have uh, maybe a pre-existing categories and pre-existing terms and see if people group things under the right uh, categories. And this is a way of uh, identifying whether or not uh, the search terms that you use, like in your labels, are the correct terms and help you define the categories of information that you actually want to find. So closed court sorting is a, a sort of validation for um, the correctness of an existing page, whereas open card sorting is, is a way of brainstorming new ways of categor categorizing and labeling information. So we're, we're going to do an example of that because um, uh, there's not a lot of um, the next uh, slide on this is chapter 11. So as I said, we're going to go through this example of cord sorting. So if I go to this page here, and this is, if I go to the, the onslaught page, we had all of these uh, navigation, local navigation, and we had these labels on the local, local navigation. And we want to do a closed card sorting, which is a way of identifying whether or not these labels are actually good labels for the information that's contained underneath them. So I'm going to put down some words. So we're doing closed card sorting. And these are discussed on page 255 and 256. <coughs> so I'm going to put down some terms. Okay, so we yeah, have labels. Okay, so 
if we had um, like little cards and I had the names of these labels on all of the cards <coughs> so I have like on Satsuk, which is <coughs> employee search, bibliotech, which is library, color box, it's a picture archive, and so forth. <coughs> these are the labels. And then underneath these, if I click on this, I'll get another page, another web page. And on that web page, there's some content that I'm going to find. And in that content, there's these terms exist on this content. So what I would give you is a list of terms and I want you to say which label those terms would be located under on this web page without looking at it. Like tell me where do you expect to find the term Bibsis ask on this uh, local on this local um, uh, search. So um, Um, Kristen. <laughs> so if if I were to say under which of those labels would you find this term Bibsis ask? Which of the labels would you find that under? You can click on the, the image version. It's not easy for the Yeah, I it's understand. The Do you think it's the same? I haven't even checked if it's the same. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't exist. So that's I can uh you open it in Google Chrome maybe and you can direct it that way. Okay. Besides the star on the left, my uh, on your right. Oh, I don't know. This one? Yeah. And then the center. Just press the transfer yes. button. Mm -hmm. Well, it uh, some <laughs> sometimes <laughs> works. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it's. I guess it's closer. <laughs> this is uh, this is employee. <laughs> the employee search. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but these are sometimes the names of products. So this is uh, this is library. Ask <laughs> PhD program. This is them. I think I spelt it in English already. And um, opening of the study year. So where would you find the term ask library 
in the local tables. Exactly, yes. <laughs> And then where would you find program in logistics? Hmm? Yep, probably. <laughs> yeah. Opening of the study year. Reservation of room. Defunter. Hansen. You have to know. <laughs> and then I'm um, Kristen. So is it a person or something? <laughs> it's uh, actually a database for um, publications. So. Uh, also find it in the library. Okay, so um, <coughs> then we can check to see where we find these things. So if we look under Onsat, we see Arntzen is here, and uh, so that's there. <coughs> okay, ask, um, and Bibs is ask, so we look under library, And then there's Bibsix ask. And then PhD program, we said student handbook. Um, PhD program. And then we have um, opening of this study year. And that's the key dates. Opening of the study year. And then we have visit card, and you said under student search. Um, actually, didn't find that one there. I found it under, surprisingly, under Tikkuri, which is um, this is where they print out things. So that one didn't necessarily, it wasn't intuitive as to where that would be. So, um, and then reservations of uh, meeting rooms. And we have meeting room booking. And then IT center for Fronter. And there's Fronter and Student Web. That's that. And I, the other thing was, I <coughs> you didn't know about it, but C Kristen is listed under um about the library okay but there was only basically there was only two things that you didn't know because you didn't know what this was and uh the this uh this one so it basically means that these um and these were the labels it basically means that these labels were good labels for being able to intuitively know where to look for the terms or the information so there was probably a, there was like an intuitive grouping of where they put the content of the site underneath these labels. 
and that's what uh, you would call as a, a card sorting exercise, it's closed. If it was an open exercise, I might do something like take a whole bunch of information about study programs and then tell you to create a hierarchy where you have labels and you tell people to look under a certain, and you create the labels yeah, for, for what will go with this information. So if I was in the um, study handbook and I had information about the logistics program and the economy program and the IT program and as all this information was smashed together you would then have to separate this into different areas and then create labels for these areas and the way you would do this is you would have um, cards where you would have to write um, the information on separate cards and then put labels and then you would like, group things underneath the labels so it's an open information, it's more of a brainstorming session, whereas this was a closed information, and this was a validation of the, of the, of the hierarchy and the labeling system. <coughs> okay, so that's just an example of, this uh, chapter has more descriptions on each of the <coughs> different types of tools that we talked about before. So I would <coughs> suggest that when you get to your exercises <coughs> and they ask you to use one or two tools for doing this type of um, this type of exercise, uh, then you go you go to this table, which is on page I was on two thirty four, I believe. <coughs> Yeah, and then there's these. Each of these, each of these tools and methods are actually described in the chapter, and then some of them are described also in later chapters a little bit. Like I think the card sorting is described in several places, but you can basically go through the list and the ones that I, the page numbers that I pointed out, and you can use some of these uh, methods. So if I go back, for example, to the exercises. Um, is it regard exercises? So it says um, yeah. so you're ex actually asked to do a, uh, a background or a description of one of the types of topics or tools and methods. So people will just get certain uh, topics assigned to them. And um, next week we're doing assignment number one. And after we talk about, I want you to have assignment number one to me by like nine o'clock in the morning so that I can go through it and talk about it in lecture. And then <coughs> when you get to after you hand in assignment number one, you should tell me if you have a preference for a particular topic here. And I might send a paper around in class on, on <coughs> next week and ask you to write down your preference for which one you want. Because <coughs> right now, <coughs> I've just listed these here, but I'll put different names here depending on who wants to do what, okay? So um, most of these are talked about in chapter 10. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to assignment number three, um, you're actually going to be using some of these methods in, in your analysis, okay? So you'll end up having to go back to this again. Okay. Uh, for assignment number two, if you want to work with one other person, you can. And you need to present this in, in lecture, your assignment number two. So we're going to have like a discussion for assignment number two. Assignment number three, it'll either be groups of four or five, depending on how many people are still with us by that point. So, okay. But uh, for now, you just mail in assignment number one. Okay. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for today. 
And next week we'll talk about chapters 11 and 12, and I'll discuss whatever you handed in for assignment number one. Thank you.